Oh, hey, friends. I'd like to introduce you to my uh, eighth grade class. What is this, fourth hour? And this is a great class. We got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven students in here, which means, and they're really good students. I, I don't know if you watched the digging last week, but hard workers, talented. This is going to be a great class for us. One thing that's new this year with this class is it's the whole year long. So we're going to be able to do all kinds of stuff. I'm really looking forward to this class. Just do a quick introduction here. I got Elena. Now these two are hard to remember, but this is the way I remember them. Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson, like Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction. Remember that movie? Yeah. It's a, it's a good movie, but it's not a good movie. I got my good friend uh, Colton over here. Colton has his YouTube channel. Uh, what's the name of that thing? Quick Draw Gaming. Don't forget to like and subscribe to that. Uh, I have one too. You have one? Yeah. What's yours? Uh, I don't want to say it though. Okay, you don't have to say it. Okay, I got my good friend Quentin here. I got Creston. Hayden. Hayden. So this is my eighth grade class and we're excited about it. Hey friends, maybe I'll just take a minute and tell you what we're doing here. This is my good friend Boyd's dresser. This is his plan. So there's a lot going on here. And then, and then, uh, um, this is kind of the look of his dresser without all the drawer fronts and everything, the bones of it, you know, the part that we're going to build first. And then he's got this sweet yellow sheet. And we've kind of laid out all the pieces of the project on this yellow sheet. And so he's going to pick a section, probably the first section, and start on that. His first section is his sides. So they're a raised panel side. Let's see if I can give you a shot of that here. So he's basically going to have a frame. Now his, his frame actually is going to go all the way down to the bottom of his base. So that way that whole heavy thing is supported, not by the base, but by this all the way down. So this piece actually needs to be seven inches well we don't really like a seven inch piece so instead of having this one piece that's going to end up being seven inches he's going to go ahead and cut this but then we'll we'll split it in half and then we'll flip it so the end grain alternates so it'd be less likely to cup or warp or something that's what we do with pretty much anything over six inches is how we do that so basically he's gonna he's gonna cut all this stuff down to rough length like adding an inch to whatever we have um You'll probably just rip it. I don't know how you want to do it. Are you going to joint one edge and then rip it a sixteenth over? Yeah. Okay. So he's just going to joint one edge and then rip it a sixteenth over. Sometimes if we have a lot of pieces, like I think later on McKenna, we plan this out with hers. A lot of pieces that are three inches, or if we have a lot of long pieces, like uh, Boyd, no Carter, on your gun cabinet, you got those two inch sides, right? Well, you know how when we cut down the middle of a board, sometimes it wants to curl? So if we have a lot of pieces or if we have long pieces, sometimes we'll cut those a quarter inch longer than they need to be. And then we'll, after they're cut a quarter inch longer, then we'll go back and rejoin and re-rip them a sixteenth over. Okay, so yeah, you go ahead and just cut that. Now leave those together. Leave this hook together because that's so short. So instead of making two 12 and 13s, just make one, you know, 27. To make 127, rip it three and a three quarters, three and three quarters, something like that. Join them, pull them back together. Okay, sound good? Yeah. Okay, right. and then while you're gluing that, yeah, go ahead and glue those panels too. Yeah. Three pieces to glue that back together, right? You could probably do that on two, but yeah, three would be. It depends on your wood. You could probably do two. Okay, good talk. We are rolling in the wood shop, second hour. Not not quite everybody yet, but we're getting real close. So it's pretty exciting. There's uh some sometimes at the beginning of the year there's a lot of waiting on the saw and the joiner and that sort of thing. But I don't know, kids can normally they have enough stuff to do that if they're waiting on one machine they, they normally can go over and start working on something else. So 
that's nice basically they're going to pick a pick a part of their project either a side or a face frame something like that and just start making pieces for it cut all those pieces a little bit oversized we, we rip stuff a 16th bigger so we can run it through the sander on the edge just to get rid of the saw marks and the joiner marks and then once we have a whole set of stuff then we'll surface and sand everything down to the right thickness cut stuff to finish the length and then we can do some assembly or do some routering whatever whatever the next process is so it's exciting to get kids going Oh yeah, I got some, these are process and becoming some panels and these are for my rails on the side for my face frame and I got some other miscellaneous stuff, it's pretty nice, got quite a bit done, feels pretty good. Alright, I'm going to interview Mr. Boyd Lothan here. Mr. Lothan, come on to the show. Okay, how was your woodshop week? Oh, it was great, Mr. Slade. It was good, yep. And we got Mr. What'd you do this week, sir? I cut some wood. That's what I did this week. How many pieces of wood? I don't know. About ten pieces of wood. About ten, a. Eh? Woo! That's more than Carter. Carter only got like seven. Why? Because he's a slacker. All right. This is Bryson updating you on my project. Um, right now, I've got a bunch of pieces cut to an inch and a half for my face frames. Um, they're ready to be put together. Before students can start in the wood shop, they take all the pieces off of that yellow sheet that we make and put it into a bill of material that basically ends up giving them the price of their project. Construction lumber prices are on their way down, but the woods we use, hardwoods and, and some of our hardwood plywoods, are still rising. So we've had to have some adjustments made on plans to make, make things more affordable. That's just, that's just something we have to do. I got my eighth graders in the shop a little bit this week, uh, just running through machines, going through safety. They've got to pass the test, but they also have to, you know, show that they can operate it safely before they can actually work independently in the shop. We spent a lot of the week going over safety in a lot of my classes, and one of my favorite ways to do that is this Sweet Jeopardy game that I made a long time ago and it gets kind of competitive sometimes. I feel like the kids kind of like it though. See, that's you down here. The guys are on the board. Uh, back to you, Brett. One hundo. Protective plastic eye covers worn whenever the slightest dangers to the eyes exist. Is that a question? Well, it's Jeopardy style, so I give you the answer and then you ask the question. No. Then you say, you gotta ask that the question. No what? Protective plastic eye covers worn whenever oh, the slightest oh, oh, danger oh, to the. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> or you could say, what are safety glasses? Either one. That's that's fine. Yeah. Does that make sense now? What are safety glasses? Is that close enough? Yeah, yeah, you got it. What are safety glasses? Eye protection. Hand tools. Here's a bonus question. When I talked about that safety rule on our most recent video over general safety, what was I building when I talked about that safety rule? The Golden Spatula Award! Yeah. See, I had this teacher, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Light, who's also our football coach, and uh, he used to, uh, he was our assistant football coach, he used to tell us all these great stories, you know. And, and I was visiting with him one time on the bus on our way to a football game, and he was talking about he worked at Wendy's when when he was in college and how, how good he was. <laughs> he, told, he told me that he won the Golden Spatula Award, which I thought was the funniest thing ever. So then years later, then I'm a senior, and us seniors decided for some crazy reason that we wanted to recognize him at our awards night. So we built him a Golden Spatula Award. It was like a trophy with a spatula made of gold. But I was working on that little base piece, and that's when I had my accident with the joiner. Good old Mr. Light. Yeah, I just had to make a new piece. Okay, <clears throat> let's see here. Who got that right? That was your question? Hand tools, that was number two, 200? Oh, yeah, take a guess. Two inches. Two inches. You can safely cut a two inch board on the joiner. <laughs> the shortest board you can run on the joiner is two inches. How big do you think the trophy I was making was? 
A trophy for ants? Yeah. I was making a trophy and it was too short for the I thing. Know. You think too? I'm going 68. 68 inches. The shortest board you can run through the joiner is 68 yeah, inches. Would you guys like to steal? Ten inches? Ten inches. That's correct. No, no, no. No, no. I thought six, 68 inches was your second guess. Do this so you have both hands to operate a tool. For $300 on the line, do you have an answer? <laughs> I need an answer now. It's just magically came to you. That's great. I was This is done to make sure that the stock clears the tool rest on the lathe. Say one more time, Maverick was talking. Judges? Oh, that's correct. <gasps> <laughs> what is hand tools? 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 <laughs> Look at the score. We're we only a thousand points behind. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Okay, you gotta go, go, go around that thing now. Yeah. You're, it's your second year. They're, they're getting whipped. Go over there. Uh, let's see, whose turn is it? That was your question? So now it's your question. It says, how close is too close? Five hundo. Oh, this is a tough one. Three machines that have a four inch safety margin. You can go talk to your uh, new team if you want. Okay, don't fret. All right, you guys, three things. Never done on the router table. Number one. Go ahead. I don't think it is. Never lift up the router wall. I mean, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. We're talking about the router table. Why would you lift up the router table? <laughs> okay, wrong. Let's go some more here. All right, the bit's spinning this way. Okay. Okay, there's one. Never back up? Right, that's another one. So never cut with it, never back up. The third one's kind of dumb, it's never freehand. Okay? Okay, well, I disagree. Okay, how much is too much? The most that can be taken off at one pass on the white belt sand with fine grit and with coarse grit. It's a tough one. Oh, 0.05. What's that? All right, first of all, you're wrong. Would you guys like to steal? No, I don't want to buy it. Like, if I buy it, I want to get it. We always did it by 0.5. 0.5 is a half an inch. You think you can take a half an inch off on the sander? Okay. You guys don't want to steal? All right, let's just, let's just do some, some mathematics here. <clears throat> let's talk about let's talk about coarse grit first. Coarse grit, so heavy grit. You can take the most off with heavy grit. Okay, point one. That would be about an eighth of an inch, right? You guys know that? Point one. What's an eighth of an inch? Point one two five. So point one would be about the size of the thickness of this marker. Okay, that's that's a lot. We can't even take that much off with the surfacer. So it's not point one. How about point zero one? Well, just to put this into perspective, what is a sixteenth of an inch? Sixteenth of an inch is, you know, it's like this, and a sixteenth of an inch is 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625, that's a sixteenth. So this, look, this is one sixth of that. So basically, you'd have to run your board through six times in order to take off a sixteenth. That's our answer my friend.
Because if we did this, going 0, 0, 1, we'd have to run our board through 60 times. 60 times to take off a 16. That's excessive. Okay, this is our answer for coarse grit right there. All right, now we're talking fine grit. So now we've got something that's a little smoother. It can't, it's not as aggressive. It can't take as much off of, okay? And we know it's gonna start with a five. 0.5, how much is that? Half an inch. So do you think you can take half an inch off? <laughs> okay, how about this? 0 0.05, what's that pretty close to? Boom! There's a 16th. That's really close. So do you think we can take a six, almost a 16th off with the fine grit sandpaper? Okay, what about this? What's that look like? Less than a 16th. This is also half as much as that. So if you take that and you divide it by two, you'd end up with this. Okay, so we can take about half as much off. So, so sum all this up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta, when you start throwing out decimals and hundreds and thousands, like they just don't make any sense until you put them in perspective with something you know. Like, I don't know how to tell you, you know, but anyway, that's it. That's for fine grit. That's for coarse grit. Great. Great discussion, guys. Great. Great. But I want you, you gotta be aware of it. Because if you start doing something dumb like this, <laughs> subtracting so 0.5, that's a huge mistake. That's a machine ruining mistake. Even if you do this, you just took an eighth of an inch off. Now I will throw this out there. On the surfacer, we normally do take off 0 0.05. What's the most we can take? What's the most we can take off with the surfacer? Surfacer. No. You got this right, McKenna. What's the most we can take off with the surfacer? Yeah. 16, which is this. So when we run the surfacer, we take off this. We start at 9-0. And we go eight five, eight zero, seven five, that's this right here. Which is not quite a sixteenth, but close. Alright, we gotta move on. How much is too much for four hundred? The maximum height, the guard, should be above the stock on the bandsaw. Uh, Okay, so here's our dangerous blade on the bandsaw, okay? And I'm pushing my board in there, and it's got a guard, but I wanna, I wanna make sure the guard is six inches up above my stock so there's no chance of my hand getting in there. No, that's a terrible answer. 